your earliest memory of coming to the beach? My earliest memory was when I was seven years old. And I remember going down the steps of Eastern Airlines when Miami Airport was called Wilcox Field. We had left Baltimore. It was pre-Christmas. We left in miserable snow and ice. And luckily, the plane, it was, in those days, it was almost four hours. Well, it was before jets. We walked down the steps, and I was so taken with this, the warmth and the smell of flowers. And this was in the tarmac of the airport. And we drove to my, to my family that I had here, we drove to their home, and I saw oranges and grapefruits and bananas. And I, and I remember, I looked at my father. I said, why can't we live here? Why don't we have to live in a crappy place like Baltimore? <laughs> And he said to me, when you're grown up, you can live anywhere you want. And after I graduated college in Maryland, I moved here six days later. I remember Lincoln Road before it was a mall. And that was truly, next to Fifth Avenue, was probably about the most glamorous street in America. It was all the upper, upper Fifth Avenue New York stores. People got all dressed up to go to Lincoln Road. And then at night, even when the stores were closed, that's where everyone walked. It was like the boardwalk in Atlantic City. My mother would wear a mink stole and her glitter glasses. And, <laughs> and all you did was walk up and down. And, uh, and everyone was dressed to kill. It was uh, the hotel. I remember when I was a little kid, and we walked, I think, into the lobby of the Fountain Blue. And I mean, they would keep it like 60 degrees in the heat. And the reason they did that was so women could wear their furs in the lobby. People used to socialize in the lobby. And then Fountain Blue, the lobby got so popular, they had a list of guests. If you were not with a guest, they stopped allowing people in because everybody wanted to hang out at the lobby in the Fountain Blue and, um, and wearing their mink stoles. <laughs> <That was> <laughs>